everybody. I'm Michelle Anderson, founder of Clarinet Mentors, and today I want to show you some simple pointers about how our posture and how we hold our body can make it much easier to produce good sound and also indirectly to affect our fingering and technique as well. I know most of us have some pretty good ideas already of how we should be sitting when we play. You've probably heard people say, you know, sit up straight, use good posture, but you might not know why that's important or what exactly that means. So I have a pretty simple system that I like to use that I'll share with you and it might just give you one more perspective on how to sit. We do know that in order to produce great sound on clarinet, great tone, we want our air support to be coming out of our mouth really fast, really focused, and the muscles that provide the energy for that are right around our belly button. I have a great video on YouTube called Activating Your Breathing Muscles, and if you haven't watched that video, it would be a really good companion to this one because that talks about using these muscles. What we're talking about today sort of sets you up so your body's in the optimum position for those muscles to do their best work. So what I like to do when I'm thinking of posture is a really simple thing. I'm going to turn sideways so you can see this. I have my students find the bottom of their rib cage. So you just poke around your bones and then stick a hand straight out so we can sort of see where that is on your body. Then we have a relatively softer section and eventually we have our hip bone and you put a hand on your hips. So you can see this distance here between my hands is quite open. What we want is for that distance to be as open as possible. When we stand, our bodies are naturally in the optimum position for performing. So I'll show you what that might look like. When I stand, this space is quite big. In fact, the ideal way to sit down, even though this would look very strange, and I'm going to do it in this strange way, would be to position ourselves over our chair and slowly bend our knees so that from the hip up, we're still standing. So it would look like this. Here I am, kind of, lowering my upper body into the chair, but it's almost as if I'm still standing. And now if I picked up my clarinet and played, I would be in great position. I'm kind of a sloucher when I relax, and I imagine many of you are too. So here's me sitting comfortably in great clarinet position. Watch what happens to the space between my hands when I slouch just about came in half. And in fact, my voice just got muffled as we did that. Here I sit up, here I slouch a bit. I see so many students, and I look at them from the side, it's easiest to see. This space, I see a little bit of a slouch here. How does that affect your sound? Actually, quite a bit. I'll just play a note in good position, I'll slouch, and I'll straighten up. Now, I'm not sure how much sound you're gonna get through your computer and through my computer, but you will hear a bit of a difference. So what you'll notice is that the sound got whispery and unsupported when I brought my hands together. As soon as I lift it up, it gets better. I've seen a couple students this week who had kind of bad posture and as soon as we straightened up, all of a sudden these high notes came easily out of their instrument that had been challenging to them before they did that. So I really advise you to check on this yourself as well. To me, one sure indication that someone might be slouching a bit is if their arm is actually resting on their legs when they play. There's no way we can have our ribs lifted up properly and rest our arm on the clarinet and have it reach our keys. So if someone's left arm is resting on their leg in any way, you probably don't have good posture. So that's something I really encourage you to notice in yourself, just lifting up. Now, there's a whole second part to posture that also is really important, and I want to talk about that right now. Tension in our body can interfere with our playing in lots of ways. If we have tension in our neck and throat, our air passage gets restricted and we don't get the great air that we want. If there's tension in our arms and hands, then our fingers kind of seize up and we don't have the fast fluid technique that we like. So here's my model of how I think about where we want tension in our body and where we don't. As far as this idea of lifting our ribs up, we can achieve that if we imagine we have a hook right at the back of our neck here and somebody is 
pulling us up. And if we're pulled up here, our spine becomes the frame that's holding our body up. Right here, I've, I guess I have some, I don't, I don't even want to use the word tension, because it's more like strength. I have strength in my spine that's holding me up. If this is strong, I've, I've got a strong hook here, the rest of my body can do this. It can just hang loosely. And in fact, the moment I just released my shoulders on this video, my voice became warmer and easier, and I can feel that difference. So when we play, we want to imagine that our arms are quite loose. It's very, very common for players to hold tension in their shoulders. I'll see them go like this. And you can just see the tension there, and you can hear the tension in my voice, because if we're tense across here, we're also tense across here. We want to let it down. Mostly, we tend to tense up when we have difficult sections. It's our body's natural instincts, like, I'm going to play this, I'm going to play this hard thing. The more tense we get here, the more tense our fingers get, our fingers start slapping, and it creates this cycle of things going worse and worse. The opposite reaction is what we need to train our bodies to do, which is we go into playing position and relax. I sometimes will play a game with my tense students. I'll tell them that I, well, I'll have them actually play something where they flap their arms around loosely. Now, of course, we wouldn't perform this way. It's an exercise, but whatever they're playing, even if it's just an easy scale. You know, I'll just have them flap around a bit. It's to just notice what it feels like when their arms are loose. And then I'll have them sit in their regular position, except that they're going to release this tension. What I'll see is if while they're playing, I could reach over and move their arm. With some of my students, it's like hitting a concrete wall. Ugh does not move. Check to see if you're one of those people. If you're a concrete wall when you play, it's linked to all sorts of other bad habits. Your air won't be blowing the way you want to. Your fingers won't be moving the way you want to. So frame here, strengthen our spine, and then just let it loose. The best way I know of to do that in a simple way is to try for the next week or so. Every time you put your clarinet in your mouth, shape your embouchure as if you're going to play, and right before you play, let it go. Just let them drop, let them be loose. That one thing done repetitively, every time you put your clarinet in your mouth, relax, starts to send the message to your brain that this is how you want your body to go. And you will recondition yourself to, instead of playing with tension, to play with much more ease. This takes a little bit of time to develop, but wow, can it make a difference in your playing. So I really encourage you to try this out. Let me know how it goes. There's a comment box underneath this video here on YouTube. I'd love to hear from you. I do look at the comments and I respond to them. And I'll also invite you, if you're not already a member of the Clarinet Mentors community, please join. It's free. It's easy. There's a link below, www.learnclarinetnow.com. If you sign up there, I have a clarinet new newsletter that comes out every two weeks and it's full of tips on how to play clarinet more easily, little clarinet gadgets, and videos just like this. So you'll be the first to hear about them. If it's ever not a good fit for you, it's very easy to unsubscribe. So thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing your comments and questions and I'll see you on the next video.